Okay, I think we'll get going. Uh, thanks everyone for joining today and welcome to today's webinar on how to unlock Microsoft's teamwork assessment funding. The goal for today is to really share some of the key details of the funding program to help you decide if you think it's a good fit for your organization. And right off the bat, I'm gonna start by sharing a little bit of high level 101 program information just to make sure everyone's on the same page with uh, how it works. The teamwork assessment funding is a Microsoft program and it's intended to direct what we call planning dollars to help pay for teams related planning and rollout efforts. So you can kind of think of it like seed funding to help drive your team's project or your adoption. And uh, ultimately, the money comes from Microsoft and it's used to pay a partner like Habanero to conduct the planning activities for you. And there are a few caveats to be aware of and some FAQs that we'll be answering throughout the presentation today. So hang on while we uh, start to move through. So just to get things started, quick introduction. My name is Chris Radcliffe. I'm a partner and digital workplace advisor at Habanero. And a big part of my job is helping companies transform their uh, modern workplace experiences with tools like Teams and SharePoint Online. And in the presentation today, I'm going to cover a variety of topics. We're going to start by talking about the overall context of Teams, where it's at today in the industry, uh, touch on its rapid growth, and share some of the challenges that we see companies having. And then I'm going to shift and talk a little bit about um, what it takes to do a rollout successfully uh, and fundamentally what's involved in a planning activity. And then we'll dive deeper into the key details of the funding program and the application process that Microsoft has just to give you a sense of what's involved and ultimately give you hopefully all the information you need in order to make a call as to whether or not it's a good fit. So first off, let's just talk about the overall context of Teams. I think it probably comes as no surprise to everyone, and you, I'm sure you have a sense of this, but there is an incredible amount of momentum in the industry uh, as we speak for Teams. It's fair to say that uh, Teams is on fire, <laughs> and it's understandable why. I mean, we've seen how the landscape has really shifted uh, across the board to where teamwork and collaboration are viewed as primary strategic drivers for great employee experiences. And teamwork is just really the way that work gets done today. Most people work on teams or they have initiatives or projects where team collaboration is at the heart of their day-to-day -day work, uh, work life experience. And so it makes perfect sense that organizations are spending a lot of time right now trying to figure out how to anchor Microsoft Teams into their overall collaboration ecosystem. And we've also heard that Teams is one of the fastest growing, it's actually the fastest growing business application in Microsoft history. Uh, almost every single organization we are talking to is in the process of rolling out Teams to some degree, or at least they have plans to over the next three to six months. And uh, we just heard the other day, this was actually yesterday, I read an article that said that Teams adoption worldwide has just surpassed Slack, which is a big deal. Uh, apparently, 13 million people are using Teams daily and 19 million are using it weekly, which is just an outstanding stat considering that the whole application was really just released two years ago. And so it's gone from zero usage to 19 million people using it daily and weekly uh, in just two years. And in terms of the core use cases that we see, most organizations are using Teams in the following order. The first sort of phase or use case that they're using it for is to replace Skype for persistent chat, messaging, and online meetings. The second and probably the most valuable uh, or most popular is the use of Teams to drive team-based collaboration with team sharing and conversations. And then the third area, which is still on the horizon for a lot of organizations, is to use Teams as a productivity platform to build uh, business applications or micro apps or microservices. But uh, we still see that as still kind of in early days. 
And while this sounds pretty impressive, and it is, uh, it's kind of important to characterize where most companies are at today. And from our perspective, we see a lot of organizations, especially in Canada, are at the beginning of their journey with Teams. And the stats overall are showing us that on average, the industry is in its early emerging stage of adoption. Um, you can see from a company by company basis, we can see that Teams adoption is looking at about the five to 10% range within an organization, which is uh, still obviously got lots of room for improvement. Uh, but it's also not as high as some other areas like SharePoint Online or Exchange Online. So we can kind of see, or Yammer for that matter. So we can see how those uh, workloads are sort of leading the way and Teams is next on the plate for a lot of organizations. And when we talk to a lot of our customers, uh, we hear a lot of common pieces of feedback. So we hear... First off, we hear a lot of companies saying, we're just starting our rollout of Teams or we're just starting to get our heads wrapped around it. Uh, it's not uncommon to hear companies still struggling with the what to when dilemma, especially because Teams is very interconnected into the whole Office 365 suite. So Teams is obviously a channel into a lot of your information. It's the, the layer that you'll be providing employees for the majority of their conversations within the organization and it also connects into OneDrive, it provides uh, live events, it allows you to connect into a deeper collaboration experience within SharePoint and these tools often have overlapping capabilities so it's easy to sort of get confused and you know frankly not be super clear about which tool you're supposed to use for which type of circumstance. And we hear this a lot, so we're shifting the teams or we're in the process of shifting the teams, but we're still using, and you can insert probably SharePoint on-prem or you know, we still have a legacy enterprise content management system or people are still you know, sharing most of their content on their desktop or their file share, but we're in the process of shifting and transforming into this new digital experience. And I get this a lot too. I hear organizations say, well, we've kind of already turned it on, but we didn't really have a plan for how to roll it out effectively. And realistically, we actually need to relaunch Teams or think about relaunching it because we haven't really done it right. And so when you kind of dig into a lot of this deeper, you can hear things like, IT, our IT department may not really understand Office 365 or they just don't have the capacity right now to stay on top of it or we don't have a formal rollout process. Nobody's really leading the charge. It's kind of a hot potato or maybe it's tug of war <laughs> between departments uh, and nobody's really guiding it as a formal initiative. Uh, people are confused as we mentioned before. Um, or we're just not ready to support it. So we get this a lot. IT often will turn things off or um, will limit the you know, ability to create new teams or to do certain things like collaborate with external parties because there's a fundamental security concern or there's a, a set of configuration decisions and discussions that still need to happen. Uh, or maybe there just isn't really support yet. So there, you know, your help desk and your support team haven't gotten up to speed, uh, or you don't really have training or a rollout plan in place. And you know, really at the end of the day, what that comes down to is you probably don't have a plan, and you may not have budget or money allocated for an initiative. And so we see. A lot of the challenges, uh, or we call them adoption barriers, kind of fall into these three buckets. So fundamentally, it often is a, a challenge around the expertise in terms of not having the in-house knowledge, or you may not have the right people aligned. Your IT uh, function may be structured in a different way that supported uh, solutions, applications, or infrastructure on-prem, and you don't necessarily have a cloud-based model set up or specifically a model that's supporting the Office 365 applications. Could be that you don't have the right capacity allocated, not just from IT, but it could be other groups like communications, your training department, you may not have a change 
a leader or change team that's collaborating with you on this rollout initiative, and it's likely that you don't have much budget set aside. And we find that that's somewhat understandable. Well, it's not great, and, and it needs to obviously change. We see a lot of companies approaching Teams because it's cloud software, it's well-designed, it, uh, it's like other tools, it should just work. There's this perspective that we don't really need to spend much on it. And we think that's really underestimating uh, the problem. And ultimately, while the technology is usable and while the features are fantastic, there's still a fundamental change that has to happen for people who are moving into this new collaboration paradigm and you need to support that. And you also need to help your internal IT team be ready to configure the platform effectively. And that all takes time and that takes money. So you can understand why Microsoft has put together this planning related funding. Uh, planning is really the first step in the process to, to a successful rollout and any type of uh, cross-functional engagement where there are multiple groups or multiple people that need to work together. And just to dive in, the teamwork assessment itself is really made up of a few days worth of workshops. So you can think of it like um, a two to three day engagement. And it's really made up of a workshop called the Dis Business Decision Maker Workshop, and then some detailed planning exercises that are guided to be on one of three different topics. So it can either be on adoption and change management, calling in meetings, and or Teams custom solutions. So that's Microsoft's guidance in terms of what they'd like us to focus on when working with companies. So let's take a closer look. So the BDM or Business Decision Maker Workshop, uh, that's really an opportunity for you to bring together the key stakeholders within your organization outside of IT who have a role to play. And it could be that they are potentially a benefactor of the new digital workplace, or they represent the employee experience or the transformational change that you're trying to create. Um, or they may actually be the sort of senior stakeholders for a particular audience that would be uh, benefiting from using Teams. So the point is get them together, get them in a room, have them make sure they understand Teams and have them brainstorm the best groups or use cases that you can bring to the organization in your initial rollout. And in the planning exercises, in the initial uh, business decision maker workshop, we used a variety of activities to create the vision, uh, talk about the overall digital workplace, not just Teams, but how it fits into the whole picture. And then we, we work through an exercise that looks like this, where we brainstorm different types of scenarios or early adopter groups that would really benefit from using Teams. And we try to help prioritize and understand uh, what that group looks like, what the impact would be for them, and how difficult it would be to bring them on board from a people and process and change standpoint. And it's good to do that because you wanna choose groups that frankly are gonna be relatively easy and have a high likelihood of success in the early stages. And you don't wanna bring on a group that's gonna have a difficult time or potentially provide a lot of resistance because frankly, in most cases, you're not really ready yet. You need to use these early adopters as a chance to get your material ready, your support mechanisms in place and refine the configuration with your IT and be able to get to a point where you're ready to scale. And then the next step is the planning workshops where we go into more detail and, and we're recommended to choose one of three different topic areas. Uh, it's not uncommon that companies are trying to get their calling, telephony and their uh, Skype to Teams migration sort of figured out or planned. That might be a logical one. Uh, we tend to lean more into the adoption and change management uh, domain because that's one of the biggest gaps that we see with Teams uh, rollouts or team plans. And you can also look at different custom scenarios, but that's also, again, a more of an advanced use case if you uh, have an opportunity to really focus on one particular category or group, or maybe there's a custom application you want to integrate or surface through Teams, 
and that's going to help drive your adoption. That's that's how you would sort of take that one in particular. But the first one, the adoption and change management focus. So this is really about getting your uh, appropriate stakeholders together across communications, your training function or change management team, your support team from an IT standpoint, that could be your help desk, may also be business analysts who are serving as your collaboration services team to support the organization with their onboarding. <clears throat> and the whole goal is to talk about what does success look like? What do you need to put in place in order to support the organization through their initial stages of rollout? And identify where the gaps are. So you may not have a training plan yet. You might want to talk about communication, how to communicate the, pro the project or the initiative or the rollout, and at what stages do you communicate to different groups. You might want to look at where you're going to see resistance or how you could potentially create support networks out in the field or throughout the organization. And it's great to create a champions network or some kind of power user group so that people are able to learn from their peers or from the trenches itself and not necessarily just have to rely on classroom training, which often doesn't scale well or really help relate to the context of what people are doing in their job. And most importantly, the, the adoption and change uh, planning is meant to help also focus on what your overall rollout ap approach is so that you have a sustainable plan for adoption. And we like to try to take people or organizations from the initial envisioning, team assessment, planning state where we've got the vision, we have this high level plan in place. We recommend moving through what we describe as almost a technology configuration and governance phase where we look at a lot of the specific tactical decisions about how teams would need to be configured. And then also we start to get a lot of the rollout uh, operational support tools in place. So that could be your training, your communication strategy, tools, assets, and it's a chance to kind of get ready for that initial onboarding. And then we recommend rolling out teams in waves or taking more of an agile and iterative approach and identifying those early adopter groups so that you can start to bring people on and test out your material, learn about how well it serves the need that they have and also adapt. And this is probably the biggest, most important part to a successful strategy is you need to understand not just how to teach people about the tools, but how to actually understand the change that they're moving from and to by adopting teams. And then make sure that your materials and your support mechanism is wrapped around that change experience. And finally, the, the conclusion of the workshop will ideally identify a, a handful of gaps or recommendations that we would make in order to roll out teams effectively. And we'll put that together into a slide deck uh, that serves as a report, both for your internal steering committee group or uh, leadership for the team's initiative. Uh, and also it serves as a proof of execution of the actual funding program itself that we ultimately need to submit to Microsoft in order to receive the funding. Okay, so that's kind of the context. So let's talk about some of the key details of how to get the funding and what it looks like. So right off the top, it's important to know that Microsoft has a $5,000 limit per company, which is still pretty good considering, you know, we're going to be using that for the initial planning, the workshops, creating a high level recommendation or project plan. Uh, and how that breaks down is it, it basically is $2 for every current inactive user you have that may have a team's entitlement, but is not currently active. So let's say you've got uh, 1,500 people in your organization and 200 people are currently using Teams. Maybe that's within IT. You've had some sort of soft rollout. You've got 1,300 people who have not yet used Teams or you, you know that you have not rolled it out to them yet. And so you would qualify. You need a minimum of 1,000 inactive employees that have not yet adopted Teams. <clears throat> and you are ultimately then, we are ultimately then paid by Microsoft for that work, for the planning uh, initiative, once we've submitted the deliverables for their review. And they're really just making sure at a high level we've covered the overall structure that they're looking to uh, you know, encourage 
And also there's some meaty detail that sort of describes what our recommendations are for success. And another interesting qualification is you need a minimum of 25% adoption already of Exchange Online. And I think this is because Microsoft knows that most organizations are likely not to roll out Teams unless they've already got Exchange Online underway or some degree of adoption already in place. <clears throat> and the last piece here is you need to be working with a fast track or co-sell ready partner. And fast track, if you haven't heard of it already, is a Microsoft program. It's been in place for a number of years now for helping organizations adopt Office 365. And a number of partners, Habanero included, are identified and certified as fast track ready uh, partners. And we can help you uh, request, we, we're required actually, in fact, to help you request for the funding and um, guide you through the process. Okay, so I, I asked a number of people who are attending the webinar today uh, some questions in advance just to get a sense of what people are hoping to hear about. And so I put them together into a little FAQ slide here. The first question, which is a great one, <laughs> is uh, what if we don't perfectly qualify? So maybe there's, you know, uh, maybe you're not a thousand people or maybe you already have some exchange online adoption but not enough you know for the base core requirement and i've asked a few microsoft people this question just to clarify you know how best to answer it and the overwhelming response is if you don't perfectly qualify it still makes sense to make the request and to go through the application process and highlight that you don't perfectly meet all of the requirements but ask for an exception and if the fast track team uh, and the funding team says, no, you know what, you're not a great fit, there are other funding options out there. And so there's a handful of goofy acronyms like BIF and ESIF, and that stands for <laughs> Business Investment Funds and uh, Employee, I can't remember what the C stands for, Employee Centered Investment Funds. They're, they're basically different funding categories that Microsoft and the account teams have at their disposal to be able to support their organizations, their customers like you, with your team's rollout. And so if you don't qualify for the fast track funding, uh, the team assessment fast track funding, you still might qualify for other uh, buckets or they may be able to rally some support in different ways. So that's important to know. Um, a second question we had was who needs to participate from the customer side? And this is actually kind of an interesting, somewhat controversial question uh, because it's not uncommon that we see companies come to the table with a planning uh, desire or intent, but they've only got IT in the discussion. And this is the number one concern that Microsoft has, and we share as well, that you don't silo a rollout just within your IT department. It's very, very valuable to get a multidisciplinary or cross-functional participation, both for the business decision maker workshop and also the adoption and change management or change planning. Uh, it's critical for your rollout that you've got participation from communications, potentially HR or your training team. You might have change specialists already in your organization and you'd likely have different people from within IT that all need to come together that may not be part of the same uh, group or function on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's good to have that cross-representation. The next question is, uh, what if we already have a Teams rollout underway? Excuse me. And this is a good one. I would actually argue that almost every company <laughs> has some sort of a Teams rollout already underway. Um, if only, you know, it's IT has got some people who are using Teams or they've been testing it out. And the uh, answer here is you can absolutely still apply for the funding. The point is Microsoft is trying to help organizations accelerate their funding beyond the basic levels. And so if you've got a, an initial rollout, but you wanna accelerate that rollout or you wanna make it more official and this funding would help, then you are a perfect candidate. And the next one is kind of funny too. What if we've already had fast track funding before? And this is not uncommon. Fast track's been around for a number of years. There have been different funding uh, programs or campaigns and the teamwork assessment 
funding has been around before. It actually was in place last year. And so some companies have already used the fast track teamwork assessment funding already. And so I, I've also clarified this one and, and the answer is a little gray. Um, <laughs> I still think it's worth probably applying if you have not got the result you were looking for and you feel that there is an additional activity or a different barrier that you think you could overcome with the funding. I think it's worth applying again. I think the fast track team may look uh, may you know slightly look negatively if you are trying to get the funding twice, and so we might have to make a strong case for why you may not have gotten the results you were looking for the first time, but why you think it's going to be different now. And also keep in mind that there's there have been lots of different types of fast track funding, not necessarily focused on teams, and that's totally okay. So you may have you know leveraged some funding for security or migration support or something else. And so you absolutely still qualify for um, the teamwork assessment program. The next one is has to do with the actual timeline. So the program itself runs from July 1st, so it's already started, to April 30th next year, so April 30th, 2020. And the funding, the way it works is it, it basically gets distributed on a first come, first serve basis. So the funding does have the potential to be exhausted or run out. We've seen this in years past where funding has dried up or it's been all sort of taken and accounted for to different various customers. Um, and you need to know that the funds, once you apply, the funds are reserved technically for 30 days for you to confirm your nomination. And then there's another 90 day period for us to actually execute on the engagement and to provide the proof of execution. So that's the actual deliverable in terms of the recommendations or the report. And so the bottom line here is don't waste your time before initiating the application and talk to us if you're interested in support. The way it works, the mechanics is we would register you as a fast track customer of ours and we would nominate you for the funding and your intent would then be confirmed by a Microsoft representative, an account team member, or someone from the program. Uh, we would then plan the engagement with you. We'd have a pre-questionnaire uh, that we have to fill out. There's some general orientation we would do to get up to speed. We would conduct the workshops, and then we would ultimately craft and review those recommendations together and submit those for payment. And that is basically it. So if you're interested, or if you think you might be interested, feel free to reach out to me directly to talk about the program. Happy to answer any further questions that you have or initiate a nomination on your behalf. And uh, of course, if you aren't interested or if you've kind of qualified yourself out, don't hesitate to keep in touch with Habanero. Uh, we've got a few different ways you can keep in touch with us. You can subscribe to our monthly newsletter. And the short link for that is hbn.ro forward slash get insights. We produce uh, the newsletter on a monthly basis. You can also keep track of what we're up to on Twitter at Habanero Consult and or find us on LinkedIn and follow us there. And last but not least, uh, you can also keep us in mind for other related initiatives. So even if it's not the planning that uh, you're looking for, we do provide a variety of advisory, Office 365 specific advisory services. So we help with visioning, road mapping, uh, technical configuration or tenant related governance. We provide adoption and change management services. We also help companies move their content. So move their legacy content, team sites or content from other records management systems like FileNet or Content Server into Office 365 using tools like ShareGate or AvPoint. And we also have uh, a variety of digital workplace solutions that we help companies to design and build from an ECM, enterprise content management and content services standpoint. We create point solutions for you know, various collaboration, advanced collaboration scenarios. And of course, we help with enterprise uh, portals or intranets and can help you move your intranet into Office 365. So that's it for the uh, webinar. I can turn the uh, floor now over to any questions. Feel free to ask questions if you've got anything on your mind. There's a poll that allows you to pop a question into the window and I should be able to see it and read it out here. So I'll just give everyone a second for questions. I 
I see one question has come. So the first question we have here is, uh, I'm just going to have to try to expand it a little bit, make sure I've got the whole thing. So the first question is, do you fully roll out Teams and remove Skype for Business, or do you have them both running side by side? And that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of companies are sort of debating the merit of staying in a bit of a hybrid mode with Skype and Teams, or some organizations that we've been working with just launched Skype, so they feel a little reluctant to switch to Teams uh, right away. They want to sort of ride Skype out a little bit. Um, ultimately, you can do both. We recommend you do pull the Band-Aid off and move quickly over to Teams. Um, you get the full benefit, frankly, from an end user standpoint when Teams becomes your entire collaboration experience, or maybe not your entire, but it's your primary window into your collaboration and your communication with your various teams and throughout the organization. And you can uh, technically use it for one or the other, but we definitely think it makes sense to try to simplify the options for your employees and not have them bounce between tons of different applications and you know the faster you can make that happen you're streamlining the experience for your end users any other questions feel free to ask Okay, well, that's great. Well, listen, thanks everybody for coming. We're wrapped up within a half hour and uh, we will be planning to uh, create a recording from this webinar today and we'll uh, pass it along, the link along if you feel like sharing it with any of your colleagues. And uh, again, feel free to keep in touch. Thanks so much. Have a good day.